Okay, so welcome to Scalping Part 2 from Capital Hungry. Uh, basically, Part 1 was talking about the core concepts. So, okay, so basically, Part 1 was talking about core concepts, um, basic, basically the principles and foundations around scalping. Uh, basically, what do we say? The main difference between scalping and other types of trading is just time, right? So what we are doing now is focusing in on a time of volume and session, and we're going to be trading the London session and looking at market structure or a few different pairs to see what we can take advantage of. And of course, we are looking to jab at the market, take out some quick profits, and that is the true essence of scalping. All the core ideas of market structure, analysis, areas of interest, they are still just as relevant. They just get narrowed down on the time frames now as we start um, as we start looking for setups. And usually, just by chance, whenever a session is coming around, especially for New York and London, these bigger main sessions where there's a lot of volume and volatility, price always already seems to be approaching a key area or is at a key area. And you just have to start uh, decision making while you're looking at price action and the fundamentals and the market volatility to see what kind of probable play you can come out with, right? So usually, the whole process or, or when I used to really scalp aggressively um, before the session, I would already start mapping out from the higher time frames down. And then I would also look at stuff like pre-markets. I would look at uh, not just pre-markets. I would also look at how previous markets closed and how those sessions ran. Um, I know Hong Kong or Asian session overall was pretty slow just because of the slowdown in data from AUD. You can see Sydney's uh, markets were a bit weaker as well. And then you had uh, weak data from China as well. Uh, Dow Jones rallied at new highs today, of course, because CPI was rebounded. And I think um, with Asian sessions sort of giving that slowdown and pullback, London session can continue the flow New York had in a bit of that um, positivity. And if we were looking, and just let's just say in this specific situation, as we are reflecting back, we are looking at what happened at New York. We are looking at what happened at Asian. We understand that at Asian session, AUD had very uh, weak for job growth data, right? And as well as China had very bad industrial growth data. So there's already a lot of pressure on sellers pressure on uh, AUD, right? So when we are trying to take advantage of some London volume and potentially maybe some GBP or Euro relief points or where they have some more positive volume towards them, as long as all the data is good, uh, we're gonna talk about news and all that stuff after, then just continuing from that Asian flow, there could be a potential chance that there's a higher probability that a pair like G, GA or EA will have a stronger, a stronger move on it when, or one-sided volatility we can read because we already know that Asian session sets a tone for uh, AUD with that weak employment data, right? So you guys can like unmute yourself, ask questions. Uh, you jump in, whatever. This is a free-flowing one. This one's going to be long too, right? It's like, it might be like an hour and a half, two hours. We're just watching stuff. So this is what I do. I understand that Dow, uh, US markets, North American markets rallied because consumer inflation data was good, right? We had that whole uh, setup there. We had a bit of indecision from uh, Jerome Powell. Uh, I know Asian markets were a bit weaker, a bit more quiet as well, but AUD took a hit from weak job employment data as well as China took a hit from their weak industrial data. Both those factors put sellers pressure on uh, AUD, right? And then, of course, you want to look at um, live squats, your Forex live, whatever, whatever speed you use for your headlines, right? And, and, at, and at the same time, you want to make sure your economic calendar is clear for the, for the time you are narrowing in and you are about to attack the market. Unless you are trying to trade the news and you have reasoning to trade the news and good probability, you want to make sure you stay away from this stuff while you're scalping, right? Because you don't want hectic volatility and spreads widening on you and you're out of the blue and you don't even know and you're just trying to take some regular market structure related trade or something, right? So we understand we have the consumer and uh, price index for UK yesterday, but tonight, uh, Germany is GDP. So, so we can, uh, right now we know that's gonna have a big impact on Euro pairs. So unless you are a high risk taker, you may wanna stay away from Euro pairs now, right? Unless you guys wanna, no, no, we shouldn't do that for the webinar now. <laughs> Unless we should check out, should we check out the, let's see what the, uh, let's see how Germany GP has been doing. Maybe we can, 
have something efficient here. <laughs> okay, actually, no, 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 this is a scalping webinar. I'm just getting greedy and getting, yeah, so, okay. What we're doing here is we should be avoiding news reports and we understand, okay, 2 a.m. and another hour from now, we have a euro, we have a euro related report, the Germany gross domestic pot, uh, product report, right? For Q3, it's gonna have some impact on euro, it's gonna have some impact on gold because of course, um, Germany continues to show weak data as what I'm as what I am expecting, then that's just going to have uh, more reasoning for investor panic or not investor panic just to ensue, but investors just to be smarter with their money and probably move to safe havens rather than putting it into German equities or European equities, right? We also have UK retail sales. So th this is our main main meat for the market or sorry, main, main news for the market. It's just the UK retail sales and the German uh, German news there. I just want to make sure, I'm just going to double check if there's no minor reports or anything else. <clears throat> German GDP, some minor France, some minor France and Spanish news too. Just in, in correlation, it can uh, it can sort of impact euro pairs. So maybe with using some smart decision making, we would want to stay away from euro pairs unless don't do this but it looks like it could be a sell but i'm not sure yet right <laughs> so and we have uk retail sales at 4 30 right so now we understand a bit about how the markets already ran how so because as a scalper you want to look at sessions in times of volume and you want to see how the sessions were running now once we understood that okay north american markets had a bit of optimism and and a strong and a bit of a strong run but Asian markets slowed down because of X, Y, Z that we already talked about. You're going to look at the market structure on whatever pair you're looking at and say, okay, this is how it ran through New York. This is how it ran through Asian. Now this is the market structure that currently what's looking like the higher probability pair to take advantage of. <clears throat> Hi, CNBC before New York open see what kind of push I can expect. Um, investing.com is a great app. You know what I mean? investing.com you can see like pre-markets for the dax stuff like that that's a good one futures right away bam 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 right this is a good one as well this is a good site overall fuck that i don't sign in canadian edition no Are on your map showing they are open markets or not? I don't know. I just randomly looked at this uh, uh, recently. You know what I mean? I, I, for me personally, so that's a good point, Lucas. For you guys, you guys should use um, you guys should use this kind of stuff. Obviously, this is the futures, and it's just showing you the futures. Over here, it should show you if it's open and closed, right, uh, via this clock. So, so the current market that will be open will have a green clock, right, because these are the active markets. And these are just the indexes to show you overall general health in a region. I, I personally know the times that markets are open. So like, I don't really need to look at that. But for anybody else, when you are looking at just indexes, like you want to look at Dow Jones, you can go to world indexes. Better to go to major index, uh, indexes. And then this is where you look for that. In the app, if you guys have the investing.com app, it will show you this, this page in majority. But not even some of the stuff won't even be on there, like Karachi and stuff like that. It'll just show you mainly from Hang Seng. It won't even show you the. It won't even show you the Russian market. It will not show you all this. It'll show you the main meat on the app. That one's better. Great. So summarize. We are gonna. We looked at what kind of news we would have to impact us through our session. We looked at how some of the markets ran for the previous session. Right. Um, we're looking at. If you want to look at your uh, Forex Live, your Live Squawk, whatever feed you use for your headlines, just look back over the last few hours. Make sure there's nothing major or anything that can impact your region coming up, right? Like let's just say there were some major um, talks about the Euro tariffs during NY between Trump and he said something negative, then you could potentially see that priced in during, during this Euro session further, right? Because you could see how the European side might reply to that geopolitical tension. That's just an example. No, not much. 
just talk about China's uh, news. We saw the industrial. Most of these sites uh, get their feed from like a Bloomberg or Reuters uh, terminal anyways. They'll, they'll just send it out a bit later. So they all have some of the most uh, generic headlines. But you don't want to look at something like fucking CNBC or something. Oh, you would swear. But like Forest Live is another good one. You're going to see the same kind of stuff. These guys just post more forums and stuff like that about their own shit. This is what we were talking about, the uh, AUD jobs report, which we, were, which we already cover and stuff like that too. Right? So with that being said, then you start looking at your uh, market structure and your time frame. Because you want to see what you can take advantage of once volume does kick in. Right? So let's just say we're looking at G, GJ. Let's just look at GA. Oh, I type like that. So GA, of course, had a huge breakout and a huge market structure difference compared to GJ because of the volatility change on AUD and just being a different secondary in the quote, right? So possibly if we have a continuation of that um, poor data from AUD continue in any reason, in any reasoning for uh, GBP strength, you're going to have some validation for this pair to push higher and break this previous high, right? So, but what you want to look at is we understand that volatility. We under, we just want to highlight some key zones because we are in a seller sensitivity area here with these wicks. But as a scalper, this is a potential range you can go tap and you can, and you can catch that as a scalper, right? That's what you want to understand is you have to change your mindset towards this time-based scalping. You have to understand your targets are going to, your targets should be reached within, within five, 15, 30, 40 minutes max as a scalper, right? You really want to be in and out. You really want to have a tight RR and look for good execution points. Your areas of interest are going to be more defined because you're more zoomed in on the time frames, right? For me, like for, what I mean by that is um, as an intraday trader, when you're looking at like the four hour, my area of, of interest might be like this, let's just say this little uh, demand and support level. But as a scalper, this is a four hour chart. As a scalper, you're not waiting eight hours for price to come here and see what happens if we have a make or break here, right? You're going to be doing this same type of area of interest analysis and looking for key areas, but on smaller time frames because you're looking to reach your goals at a faster rate, right? So we're just going to look at GA. We understand that we do have this range here. Um, all these wicks too, uh, over here, we've broken above that area. And then as we start looking at the time frames and zooming in, you just start doing candle reading at your zoomed in areas of interest. So GA is just a good one that we could take advantage of because we could get that classic London push that usually pushes GBP pairs on average, right? I'm not saying that always happens, but in this case, you have the one-sided volatility that we know AUD is weak, right? And we know AUD is weak from the pressure from uh, the weakness in China data and their own employment data. So then I'm looking at the four hour here. We're going to define our zones a lot better, but you just want to look at the market structure. You want to understand that we did have a lot of sellers pressure, right? We did have that sellers pressure, but we had that break. And that, this break wasn't even from news. This is time ago. This is the whole news push, but it's already following the trend and change in market structure, right? This is the low hit, but that low could not break above uh, or cannot break below this previous zone, right? You had price sort of playing in this channel. And then when it came to test this area of reaction or this area of interest, you had that break above and then you had the support created there. Right. And now we are sort of trending in that market structure, but we could see a potential retest of this low. What I would want is just a continuation up to this range. That would look like the most probable thing to me, but during London, you can get pullback. So to quickly summarize again, all I've done is I've looked at some of the market health, right? When we're looking at, let's go back to some of the futures. FTCE is not looking too bad, right? UK markets aren't looking that bad. They're looking like they could follow suit. Um, they look like they could follow suit with the US markets, right? There isn't any poor negative headlines so far related to GBP. We know that AUD does have fundamental weakness and we saw that Asian markets ran very slow and that China's data is also very weak, right? And Asian markets could have given us that slow uh, signal as well. 
we know that when we're looking at the market structure on daily, we have clear validation of bullish pressure to take advantage of over the last few days. And we do have a range to go at these tops of these wicks and even, even a bit higher because this range has yet to be filled on the daily, right? So potentially, if you do catch a good entry on some of these plays and scalps, what I recommend is entering multiple positions or two to three positions because I should be giving these tips because um, a lot of people don't know this stuff. But, but there, when people, where people mess up is they don't think logically in the moment and they will try to turn scalp, all their scalp positions into swings or intraday plays and then any harsh pullback will fuck them up. You have to look at your targets and understand if you're going for 10 pips, 15 pips, 20 pips, fine. Enter a few, enter an extra position, but um, spread out your lots. If you're going to enter a one lot or a 0.5 lot, put two 0.25s or put two 0.5s, right? Have them in similar areas or even leverage yourself better entries that way, right? Then when your first one hits your profit goal, let your second one run risk-free. If you're getting, or you can even start trailing the stops at that point right i can show examples of that when we zoom in the time frames but these are tips and stuff for, like as a scalper because you're in such a fast-paced environment during volume and volatility you have to learn to protect your capital actively it's not it's, it's not like an intraday trade where you're trying to wait four to eight hours for it to play out so you're going to be sitting back and like okay my trade set risk-free no you have to act pretty quickly here you have to know when to take profit. You have to read active price action and candles and say, okay, my area of interest was holding and it does look good, but I just had three, I just had three five minute candles reject and it looks like it's going to come back down first to maybe test this area. Maybe I should get out of this trade or close out at, at, at this much profit instead of my full profit goal and, and wait or for a better entry or try to try to scalp and adapt to a short now. If you guys ever watch Wix Don't Lie or Market Fluidity, that's his whole concept, right? It's stuff that Rakeel and I, or Ted, Ted and I guys, we've been back testing with each other for like two to three years as we've, as we've gone through the dirt, right? Scalping, it, it's, so, it's so emotional where you, you can marry a bias and it can, it can hurt you quick, right? You, you can want to be right so bad and it can hurt you quick because active price action is happening and you are in a scalping environment where time is limited. Right, you're working with volumes. You have to try to get your play quick and get your money and get out. And there's goods and bads to this, right? The goods is you can make a lot of money fairly quick, or make a good amount of money fairly quick, and then have the rest of your day. You're only attacking the market at a certain uh, time of the, certain time of the day, right? Or certain whenever it is. You're following a plan. You're only scalping for this window. Whatever happens, happens. Then you're done for the rest of the day. And there's a lot of downsides, like the stress, the pressure, the active candle reading, being adaptive, being sharp. No, sometimes during your sessions, you won't have any, you won't have any fucking, um, you won't have any opportunities. Sometimes your sessions will just be filled with news that can just be whipping price up and up and down. You have to be aware of all this. Wait, what time is it? 1.23. We're good. We got time. But yeah, look, GA might be doing a little retest now. So, when I'm looking at this pair and I'm noting market structure, I'm noting that we have a shift from, uh, buy, from seller pressure to buyer pressure. Right? You are breaking previous um, highs. You are having a shift. You, you could not sustain a lower low here in that channel, I was saying, and you have the fundamental validation behind that. We've already had a pretty good pullback in the last hour or two. Maybe we can get one more pullback to the zone, but if not, when you start looking at the higher, when you start looking at the lower time frames, if we break above this level here, if we break above this little zone here, as a scalper, you have a nice range to play here, right? So as a scalper, the best thing you can do is try and play with the trend and the current trend is very bullish, right? The fundamentals are very bullish behind this as we have AUD weakness. But when you're looking at the price action, there is potential that if you reject this, you could have a bigger pullback. So now as a scalper, you say, what am I gonna wait for? Or am I gonna come back in an hour or two and attack this and wait for a buy? Or am I gonna come back in New York and say, maybe we'll get this buy area tested? 
or am I going to take advantage of a pullback and try to catch this pip range here? These are questions you have to ask yourself and say, am I going to trade with the trend and wait for a clean break above this and catch and catch it up to the wick fill or even higher? Or are we going to reject this area? And if I see the candle signals and um, price action that shows us rejections, right? If I see, let's just make this a little neater. right if i see that one minute or, or lower time frames are having uh, exhaustion and they're not being able to break above into that structure then we don't have that validation just yet but if i see price come here test this low come back up start breaking above that's when you start taking advantage here because this is your range, right? These are your ranges now. You're just looking at the lower time frame now. <clears throat> Sorry. Right? Because as a scalper, this is what you're sort of looking for. And if you have that verification and you break this low, you can say, okay, we're gonna come retest this previous zone. We can, have, we can even come retest this broken market structure a bit lower. You just start mapping out possibilities. But you have to understand if you are going for that, you're, you are also going against the current trend, which is bullish, right? So then you start saying as a scalper, okay, this is my current area of interest. Maybe this previous low here, is my current area is another area of interest if we if up to one minute breaks below that you have this range to play or am i just going to wait for the buys as a scalper and sit around for maybe another hour or two um wait for london actual open maybe wait till like 3 30 and see if we come back and reject this structure or come even lower and reject this it would be more probable to reject this then i'll look for buy scalps all the way up all the way right back up right or at least back to this range you can set rid as soon as you get that rejection here, if you do get a good entry, <clears throat> you'd want to put your stop below the previous zone. Right? Because you have this you have this zone and this wick tested. If you get the candle signals and price does come to test below here, right? And on the one minute you have some rejections, on the five minute you have some reversal points then you would just want to get back into that range, right? Put your stop below that zone. You have to extend your stops a bit more because you're looking for a one-to-one, -one, a one-to-two, a one-to-three max, right? This does have the potential with the momentum and with, <clears throat> and, with, um, and with AUD weakness to go farther. That's when you can extend, right? Or... If you want to quickly attack the market and jab, you're going to be looking for the inverse and you're going to try to take advantage of that pullback. But to me, this is sort of messy, right? When you look at the 15, we could easily come down and test this low or if we reject where we are right now. Right? Because you want to move with the trend. You want to understand the volatility. You want to understand the events that have happened in the past. And then you want to map out a potential trade because unless if we reject this area and you have those confirms, then you have that validation to pull up, but you have to start watching uh, the price action. <clears throat> See, this is where, this is where it gets interesting because now you're looking at these areas of interest and you're seeing how price reacted. You're looking at this previous zone. You're seeing you have that exhaustion. You understand that if you break below this level, a clean candle, you will come down to this zone and you will do not have validation to take this trade or you have reasoning to close a trade early or get out of it, right? And at the same time, in that same decision making, if you have a flip and you want to take advantage of a flip situation and you want to short it down, you have to know if the risk to reward is worth it for you, right? You have to understand, is the risk to reward worth it for me here? What would be bad? So all you're going to see here is if it breaks below that or if you start seeing this. That's all you're going to see at these areas of interest once volume does kick in, right? It's still fairly, it's still like 130. But I'm just giving you guys an example of how I would 
go through a scalp, my whole thought process of like understanding I have to be in and out of the market, the whole uh, timeline and everything, right? Look how I look at some of the pre-markets, how I look at some of the past markets I've ran. Um, I look at one minute, you can look at five minute, right? It just depends how, how actively you want to look at price action. One minute is, is continuously 60 second candles worth of data, right? So you can see rejection faster. You can see how price validates and how it changes faster, right? You can see if you, you just get more, you just get information a lot quicker, right? And, and that can be very key for entries and as well for scalping. It's just about using it in the right area. <clears throat> but I guess now we just wait for the for the volume. <clears throat> and especially when you're watching price auction like this, because you're just watching the same stuff. You're watching stru structure. Oh, this would have been a nice snipe, eh? Take an entry there at that area of interest. And then you see once it reacts to this level, this previous level in the one minute might have a pullback. Then when you watch that, you want to know, is it going to break back below that pullback? Or is it going to hold this structure and just do a pullback and then continue higher? It'll react here again, pullback, and then go continuously up. Unless there's any reason for seller's pressure to break it back down. Right? That's how you start watching price action. That's how I watch price action. That, that is what price action is to me. It's actively watching price. It's the action of price. This is just a quick example. And I'm not saying this is going to fly or this is right. This is just a quick example of like, I would want to take advantage of something that gives me the highest probability in the quickest amount of time. And to me, that's like, oh, let's look at GA because of X, Y, and Z, or because we saw this during the Asian markets, or, or FTC 100 looks a bit stronger. Let's see how that runs, right? One sec. <clears throat> All right, what else are we going to talk about before we get into when the volume kicks in? So we went over that to check the news, right? We talked about that, checking for news. Checking your headlines that can impact the pair you're looking at for the last few hours. Um, checking the daily trend, looking at previous session movement, four hour and one hour structure. It's better to follow trend, but you can look for quick pullbacks or, or whatever you want to look for, exhaustion sales. There's so many strategies that, that can be applied to um, trading, right? Just, or scalping, right? So follow trend, five minute and one minute price action. Execute as per your scalp goals. Look for one to one, one to two, one to three. Um, enter multiple positions and leave a runner after. Try to set risk free when you can as you're actively watching price action, but you have to learn how to understand volatility and market conditions. And that comes from experience and chart hours and, cons and consistently watching the market. Right? Uh, leave a runner after your goal hit as it can. Uh, hit risk free and extend with market structure. So if market structure is in your favor and you already secured your scalp and you're good and you profit what you need to and you have another position running, you can set that risk free and let it run extended if the trend is in your favor already because you're working with trend. You're working with the market, you weren't fighting against it, right? Um, don't over trade. For example, if, if we executed on this scalp and, we, and took that buy like I said here, Right, and we were wanting to come back to this range. Wherever I was saying, I forgot. Man, I'm fucking nasty. Anyways, uh, <laughs> uh, anyways, if you wanted to, I'm not saying it's gonna break above, but man, she's a nasty. If you wanted to, if you took that and it, and instead something happened and volatility hit or a news headline hit, and all of a sudden this just gets canceled out and your stop loss gets hit, don't over trade. Don't try to enter right away. Uh, right away. Wait for price action to develop. Think clearly, think logically, because otherwise you might just be you might just be acting impulsively. Right? You have to watch price action. We have to if we already took that entry based on all those confirms we were saying, we got that snipe here, right? We have our stop set. You could already set this risk free. Right? Like you are already, it already gave you that pullback to this area. And it's already, this candle's already flipping up, going to this target. If you guys rewatch this video, 
you could already set this risk free and sort of and could have secured some and you're just looking at price action where it matters and remember what i was saying you're watching price action so now you know you're coming to this little area of sensitivity do you want to secure here or are, are, are you going to trail your stop do you want to close or are you going to wait to see if it breaks out even further and then you're going to have to see okay let's see if we can break through this little trend area it's the same principles of market structure we're getting these uh, higher lows right we're getting some breaks above previous areas we have a range to play with it's just shorter time frames okay so um i know that was a little fast it was a little intense probably wasn't intense it might have been a lot of information fairly quick but that's fucking scalping guys <laughs> that's really what scalping is right you have to be quick you have to understand what you're doing um everything i just showed you is is exactly how i enter snipes on the one minute so like fucking if you guys if you guys like i don't hold any secrets back i just showed you guys like okay i would be following trend i would be following market structure i would be looking at key areas of interest at that time and if we have those validations i would execute right if, if price cannot break below this previous low and you have this one more candle up you would probably enter here i'd probably enter here or i, I would have probably entered anywhere here already because like you guys see how i do it am i telling you guys to do the same no you can wait for more confirmed right you can wait to see if this comes back and, and makes another low and doesn't break that structure and then starts creating that trend that way. And then you can enter here. Then you can see if you want to extend that hold, if you have a break of this level, that's price action. How you want to watch it, if you want to watch it on the one minute or if you want to watch it on the five minute. On the five minute, if you were coming back to check every candle, you would have missed entering here already. You would have missed that nice entry already. That's just why I enter on the one minute. Right, you would have missed already entering here because you would have waited for this candle to close and you would have been watching the five minute. You would have just been seeing it go up and down here, and then you would have saw the like, oh, it's pushing. Right? So now when you're watching the five minute, you might say, Oh, I want to break and retest of this area, and you have this range to play. But this is all the stuff I already showed you. And it's easier to watch for me on the one minute. Like, okay, now, oh, okay, we're breaking above this area. Look, we retested it. Are we going to break back below? Is this a fake out on the one minute? Or are we going to continue up? What better, what better time frame to watch than these 60 second candles watching and you're scalping? You're scalping, right? You're trying to be in and out of the market fast. So this is, this is price action. This would have been fucking zero drawdown. You didn't even need a stop loss. But that's just a quick example. This isn't going to be the only example. I'm going to do this more often through more nights so you guys can keep seeing it how I see it. But does everything make sense so far about how I look at the daily? I don't, you don't see me go look at monthly, weekly, or, and even, or even the daily trends. I just look at the last couple candles on the daily, right? Then I look at the, the news we have to make sure I don't have anything that can interfere with me. For example, if I was looking at EA, let's just see if EA is moving exactly the same as GA. Right? It's moving fairly similar, but there's a lot more selling pressure and it's moving a bit more choppy because there is news coming up, right? Where to me, GA is moving a bit more smoother right now. And that's just looking at these lower time frames and looking at like we have more areas to break here, right? Where GA looks like it has a bit more of a cleaner movement it's had so far with these candles. So that euro was avoided because I know there's news coming up like right now, soon, right? 20 minutes. And we also have the pre-London push coming up, right? But that's just my process of looking at the markets, looking at how previous sessions ran, looking at some of the current market health or some of the pre-markets for our session. If this was New York, I'd be looking at pre-markets for Dow and I'd be looking at what happened last night, right? Trying to look at a pair we can take advantage of from what has happened so far. Or if you can't do that, just go look at the pair you always look at. Go look at gold. Go look at a GJ. Do the same thing I did. From the daily looking at what, what the last couple candles are telling you if it's not clean don't trade it if it's not clean don't trade it right and then you just start narrowing down the time frame you go from a uh, trend to market structure to execution points and areas of interest and you do you guys understand how your areas of interest is everything's just zoomed in more everything i show you guys from intraday to swings on scalps is just zoomed in more and in, in a smaller time frame and a bit more intense. Why do you think my entries are good? 
because I've been doing this for so long. I've been watching this chart. I've been watching the, you know how many one minute candles I've probably watched in my life? Oh shit, I, I can't even count anymore. Right? But that's just how I do it. So, um, uh, I don't know what else to really talk about or do in here. We can uh, look at another pair at, at the, when volume kicks in. I'm just going to take a quick little break. Pause myself and mute it. But yeah, on the one hour, basically I was saying if we, this was that previous area of interest, that low, when we were watching the one minute, it rejected here. We literally would have had entries here. And I said, we can go back to the range here as a scalp. You could already, you could have already secured some, right? Because we didn't have the validation and the one minute didn't break that previous low, we didn't have reason to do this. We didn't have reason to come back lower. We are just going to continue most likely with that trend. This was probably the pullback. Now you're going to look at what happens at this area of interest. Are we going to break above this and continue to this next range? Or are we going to have rejections in one minute rejections again here and range back down? If that's price action, that's scalping, right? And, and you have to choose when you're going to jab in and out. In that moment, I showed you guys in the one minute, I said, this is a good entry point. And, and, and honestly, when people tell me, oh man, why don't you send your entries in the chat? Look how fucking, look, look, look. Look how fast this happened. This is scalping. Does that make sense? Like, look. It happened to, as I was talking to you guys, I was like, this is a good entry. And I put that, and I put that thing here. I put this here. Remember? Like, I was like, this would be a good entry. I put your stop below the previous. Then you start going to your ranges. You already had this. This was our first range already hit. Target hit. Move this, break even. Let these run now to your next target. That's what it is. So when people say, man, why don't you tell us when you enter? By the time I enter, secure, I enter my positions and I enter for intraday trade. Oh man, I'm fucking beef. Okay. By the time I, we're going to have some sensitivity here now, right? You have to start watching the reactions. But by the time I enter and I look, manage my position and secure it or set it or manage my stop, two minute, three minute candles have already gone by. By the time I can do that, come to the channel, say, guys, I entered and this is the reason why. That's like, this is the volatility and how the markets work. That's why I don't try to tell stupid fucking signals. I try to teach this. I try to teach this instead. The whole understanding lower time frame webinar, the whole scalping 101, and now this should show you exactly how I scalp and exactly how I enter. Oh, fuck me. Jeez, boys. Well done. <laughs> but that's an idea. So in the chat, does everything make sense? Oh, you guys are sending messages. I didn't see these. Please do more like this. Breaking now. <laughs> right on the pit. I didn't see you guys' messages. I was, this is what I mean. I didn't even read you guys' messages because when I'm in the zone, I'm in the zone. Right? How often do I use CNBC? Are you on the maps? Okay, I already read that. Dude, what the fuck? Yep. You watching Dow Jones and S&P and NASDAQ? Yeah, exactly. So, Lucas, what I checked before was the futures, what, what SEC is looking like it can come up. And the futures were looking green. So that showed me London was probably going to follow suit with how U.S. markets ran. Asian markets would have ran strong, but they only ran weak because of such uh, weak data from, um, such weak data from uh, China's industrial, right? That's why they ran so weak. And, if, and then if you get a break above this level, you, you have that full extension and that range back up, right? You're going to come back. Once you break above these wicks, you're going to get this wick filled again, or you're going to get this full range filled there. But now this is that, this is another area of interest to watch because you have that sensitivity as an intraday trader. This would not be an area of interest to me. This would just be a medium zone. That's how you adapt, right? As a scalper, this is an area of interest for me because price is going to face some sensitivity here, or it's going to face some reaction here. It's going to do something there. So, G, for a sniper entry, do you wait for price to break? I wait for price to react at my area of interest on the one minute. And, like, if you guys watch this video again, when price reacted there, it did not break. When price came to my area of interest, which I addressed was the previous low, because that's where we are right now with a bit of volume, it did not break that previous low. And then we have this candle correct that candle, a bit of a pullback, and this would be an entry point anywhere here I would have entered already. Right? Then, then, then the range is all the way, the range of the scalper is just back up here or to this zone here where I was showing you guys on the hourly. And now look at our second area of interest. We're getting, we're getting some reaction. 
We're not getting just as look, you have the clean moves between ranges, just like you do in the hourly and stuff like that. Right here to here, clean. Now you get some reaction. Once you break above that, here to here, clean. Now in the hourly, that's a level. You get some reaction. That's price action. You're watching that. Right? Are we going to come back and break below and make another low? If that low continues to hold, you could still hold your runner. That's already risk-free. You're just watching market structure and price action. Okay. What else? Please do more like this. Please do more like this. Yeah, I'm going to do more like this so you guys understand like uh, how it all works. Yeah. Right? But yeah. That is, to summarize, it's just what price action is. Right, that's what price action and candle reading is. Market structure. Every if you guys need better understanding of market structure and all this stuff, watch the web. Watch all the webinars I have on market structure. It shows you exactly how I look at trends, how I view price, how I look at market structure. And this is just me zoomed in. And now you guys also understand when I get those one minute sniper entries, how I do it, what I'm looking for, and that like and that. It's hard to say, it's hard for me to enter and trade manage and do that, all that shit myself and come, you come to you guys and send the entry because by the time I entered here, price can be here, right? It's only three, four minutes difference right here. That's three, four minutes. And it's, but as a scalper, that's all, that's what you're trying to be in the market for. 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes. You're trying to be in quick, right? So look, we had a bit of reaction. We're breaking above this area. Probably will come to this range, but we have some sensitivity. So as, as I'm just watching price action, that's what I'm watching. Um, and luckily this is saved. So this can always be, this can always be watched again, right? Yeah. Angela needs to understand that like, look, within five minutes, we had our, we had a move or a potential scalp and we could be out of the, in, in and out of the market, right? Then five, we entered here. And that's just saying, like, based on price action, we entered here, 5, 10, 15 minutes, trade done, out, out of the market, zero fucking drawdown. Even now you have runners going too. And, and these runners can potentially, if, if, if the vol now, now your runner is set, whatever's going on, don't forget, stay smart. We just, let's just say we just banked this trade. We just made money. Okay. Slap yourself in the head. Cool. Let's continue to watch market structure to see if we can milk this further or if I'm going to close my runner and if I'm going to come back in New York, if I'm going to come back in a few hours after news and see how price is set. Because we do have GBP news at 430 and if that retail sales is good, it's just going to further boost our position here. Right? But you guys saw exactly how I would attack a trade. I started at 1 a.m. just so because I know we get we do get these moves between 1 to 3 a.m. Right, that's when price starts moving. Uh, I wanted to take the first 20 minutes just to summarize summarize things and talk about what I view. And um, if you missed anything, just rewatch the video. But yeah. Now you guys know why I don't go on Rakeel's webinars. Because I'm fucking better. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, but like we've all been doing this stuff. Like, you know what I mean? Like all what Rakeel does every day is, is amazing. This is what he does every day. He's in these trenches every day. And he knows I and he knows he knows I roast them and he knows I praise them. And he does the same shit to me because we've been in the trenches. We understand this shit. We understand how volatile it can get. I know right now if something bad happens, bam. <laughs> You know what I mean? Full cracks of this move. You you have to be in you have to be in the zone and you have to be able to like adapt and and handle those things like that. You have to know when to close. You have to know when to secure your positions. That's just that's just the mood. That that's just the environment with scalping. All right. Play some music. I'm probably gonna fucking uh stop this one so and, and reinvite you guys just so I can uh because this was like a perfect. 
this because this was like a perfect example. Yeah, let's look at one minute. Yeah, one minute showed some rejection points at the seller sensitivity area, but we did break above this level, right? So now I would watch if, if we come below this or if we continue up because we did break above this. I would watch that. <laughs> <clears throat> Damn, gold having hard rejection. What's gold looking like? Gold's tricky here because we have a lot of sellers' impulsive moves. This is strong market structure here, and you're getting these levels, but I don't like how we've been slowly climbing. Whenever I see price slowly climb, climbing like this, unless we get a clean breakout of previous highs, so I'm just doing some you know what I mean? Unless we get clean breakouts of previous highs, it, t it tells me this is liquidity generating for a harsh drop, an impulsive drop, like similar to this kind of stuff. Right? But th these are hard rejections at key levels. Right? You do have this trending market I just put that line there. Don't worry about what it actually means like that. You do have this potential break of structure here, but you do have seller sensitivity areas. For clean bullish pressure on gold, and this isn't for scalping. I'm just talking about like, uh, um, cause I want to intraday trade gold two buys, right? But for a clean break on gold, once you have a break above this area here, you have this range play to 1472 in this wick. Once we break here, we're going bullish again. Like we're going to get a full correction of this move. And then you have that full range here. You know what I mean? I should get a one minute chart. I should get a one second chart to upgrade. Is this it? One second, you will not be switched to daily. <laughs> Fuck. Because gold has been climbing nicely in the one minute, but if, if it breaks below this structure, it's going to impulsively break it. Like this is a lot of liquidity generating. But once you get a break of previous highs here, is, then you have that validation to me to long it up to like that range. Yeah, so you'd need to break above these bikes because that's the same area to the left here. You need to break above these highs. Once you get a break above these highs, you're clear. Otherwise, you might get an impulsive break. Because if um if if UK markets are running strong and if retail sales is also rebounded and that boosts our GBP buys even more right? Then you're going to have the impulsive break here because you're going to have you you're going to have UK markets rallying like US did, right? So you need a break of this previous high and that wick range on the one hour in this area of interest that I just uh, addressed here. Otherwise, um, you're going to have that. Yeah, you're going to have this. <laughs> and then you just have to start watching price action. See if it breaks below this level here. It's crazy. Everybody's going to look at one minute now, eh? <laughs> oh, look at that little impulsive break. Whoa. No, it might come back up, but that's, that's, that's the power. That's the power of one minute. It's in too intense. It's sick. It's so sick. I have so many chart hours looking at one minute at key zones, and you learn so much. You learn so much. You guys are going to learn more now. See, oh, look at that rejection back. See? 
See, like, look at this price action. Like, how much better can you get? You're just looking at the same stuff you're looking at. Oh. See, this is all I would be looking at. Jeez. What time is it? Oh, it's five minutes till uh, five minutes till uh, pre London. That's just why. What are you gonna watch? Gold or GJ? Man, this is so exciting. <laughs> yeah, we'll do this more often too. Fuck, I wanna um, I wanna stop. Oh no, we'll just watch it now for five or ten more minutes, and then I'll then I'll stop it. Otherwise, it's gonna be a long video. It's gonna be like another hour, and that means the scalping session will be two hours, or this whole scalping webinar will be two hours. I'll do a part three. Well, yeah, I was looking at UJ to go down to this area of interest. Oh, it's coming. This is one minute too, but I was looking at, oh, this is one hour. It's one hour. Yeah, that's what I was looking at. It's coming here, got area of interest. But it's holding support here, but I don't know. Look at that. GJ and gold both falling, but GJ's at a pretty hard support. 139.5 is a PPL2. If it breaks above that, 139.5 is a PPL. So that's my area of interest. Remember I told you guys at the start of the webinar that usually just by chance during sessions, price is already at a key support or resistance area and it's, it's going to use the volume as reaction. So if you can start to look at market structure, the trend, and all those points I told you, you can have a better chance at predicting that reaction. Right? Oh, gold is doing that impulsive break. Fuck, man, I'm sick. <laughs> you guys know I would have entered up here. You guys know I would have entered up here already. <laughs> I already did. I already did. <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> This could just be liquidity, though. Oh, see? Look at this. this uh... So this is, this is what I like to see is when you make these kind of structure changes. You have these lows created. This was the low. And then you have the same thing like we saw before it just happened, right? You have the price pulled up, and then it reacted at this area. But now pre-volume pre is coming here. Let's just see what uh, volume does here. Because if it breaks above 139.5 here, uh, London's going to push this up. Otherwise, if it breaks this previous low, it's coming back down. And one minute here, if this breaks back above into the structure, it's just like an hourly chart or a daily chart or like anything else when you're looking at a trend that's just going to break back into structure. You're looking at the same reaction, right? If it, if it breaks back into structure, it's going. If it rejects, it's coming back down. This, if it breaks above, it's going up. Because you're at a key area of interest as well. 139.5, that PPL, that hard support level. You have FTCE, um, which was looking strong prior to pre-markets. And then you had U.S. markets run strong as well. Uh, yeah. But this is literally what I'd be, this is just all I'd be doing. No, no I was kidding. I, I, but you, I'm just saying you, you probably would have known I would have got in there with how I was talking about it when I looked at hourly. But uh I'm, I'm teaching you guys, so I didn't get a chance to answer. <laughs> yeah, boys, you guys could have scalped. This is another scalp. Look, 14.66, the thing. 14.65.2, 20, almost 20 pips right here. Coming. <laughs> See, now you have another area of reaction here. Don't become like crackhead and just watch one minute all the time, man. But see how you've had the same thing where uh, you had this, um, just like any market structure, just like when you look at the hourly chart and you have a break of a trend in a retest of a zone and it breaks down. The price action is the same, right? Oh, we got some volume kicking in too. Let's just make sure these weren't liquidity grabs. And then you have to validate, okay, is, was this a liquidity grab before volume just kicks in or what's going on here? 
30 seconds helps when volume kicks in. But take in, keep in mind, we already banked. We, we caught GA because we saw the setup and we adapted to it ahead of time and, and all the reasonings we said. That's how, that's how scalping is. You have to know what you can take advantage of, take advantage of it quick, right? Sometimes we might have not had that GA chance and we might have been waiting till volume now. We might have caught these gold uh, buy scalps and maybe set some risk free or we would have been looking at uh, GJ to set up some buys. Oh, look at that. Oh, 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 wonderful. This would have helped. Oh, oh, cool. Oh. <laughs> lovely, simply lovely. Oh, gee, oh, boys, what else do you guys want from Capital Hungry? <laughs> who said, who said gold's going to have a little impulsive break or inject there? And who said GJ? Oh, man. Oh, GJ. <laughs> Oh, that was nice. That was nice. That was nice so far. All right. That means that means now look, we had our G, that means our GBP AUD probably had a nice push if we had that scalp still running. What the hell happened here? This this went down. Whatever. We already banked that. <laughs> oh no no no. We were entered here. Oh shit. We're still good. Sorry sorry. We entered down here. I thought for some reason we were good. You would have still had this running. You could have already banked this because you had you just you as a scalper you just took advantage of that volume. You could have banked that move because you already entered here, right? Or on that gold play, we already entered at that fourteen uh, sixty six point when we saw that rejection, right? Like a gold, we were already seeing those rejections and price action there. It took advantage of that. And now, whatever happens here. You might be set risk free. You might have already banked. You might just be watching reactions. Now it just is what it is. But that's that that's scalping. That was G A, G J and gold. Quick time. Calls quick time. That's that's just how it goes. <laughs> yeah, now you guys are gonna fucking want me to do this all the time and you're gonna bother me all the time. <laughs> but that's how I do it. That's just how I do it, right? Now I'm going to stop this so we can record this and I can save it and I can put it in the drive. Um, we can just talk about price in the chat now, all right? And or I'll send another Zoom session. I'm starving, guys. All right? Hopefully that was useful. Please review the whole video. Hopefully it all made sense. Oh, fuck gold. Jeez. I would have had a nice entry. 20 pips. Easy. And, that's, and as a scalper, and... Because I showed you guys, I'm showing you guys how I execute on the one minute, there's very minimal drawdown if you learn to do it properly, right? Like we were looking at these rejections and I told you guys like, yeah, gold needs to break higher. If we don't, we're getting this validation. If this one minute doesn't break higher than that, like it'd be an entry point. Anywhere here is entry. Even here's an entry if you want, 10 pips. That's the nature of the beast. All right, guys, I'm gonna end this and send it over. And uh, hopefully that, hopefully, the first one with the core concepts and everything was a good introduction. And then hopefully this helps with the meat of things. And then we'll have some more talks as we get into it.